welcome back to the King of Solar Screens Window Screen Manufacturers Part 2 of How to Make Your Own Colonials at Your Home. Uh, of course, in Part 1, we talked about how to measure. And remember, always left to right, bottoms up. And always measure into the center, just like we spoke about. Oh, and while you're here, hit the subscribe button. But now we're going to take and put our frame down here on our bench. Now on the bench, instead of measuring it left to right, remember now we're doing this in reverse so that we can put our uh, material on this once we finish. So we're going to do it from right to left, but still bottoms up. So come on here a little bit closer. And here's the measurements for this particular customer. For this particular frame. And again, I'm going right to left. And I'm going to do dead center 11. 7 16s, 21 and 13 16s, 16, and then finally uh, 32 and 1 8. And again, remember, I'm going right to left in the, dot, in the shot because our frames are upside down so that we can make this. So, and again, the bottoms up is still the same. And remember, we're measuring from the bottom up. In this case, we're going to have a 15 and 9 16s. Most colonial windows end up being about that, between 15 and 16, 30, 45, etc. We usually give or take a little bit in that. So that's a good rule of thumb to remember as well. In this case, I'm going to go to a 30 and an 8. 44 and 316. Wow, that's a tight one. I like that. Don't get a whole lot of these 16s. And then 57 and 116. We're going to let the video continue to play while I measure uh, the rest of this. Actually, why don't you go ahead and hit the pause button. Done. All right, so I only paused you so that I could measure the other two sides and not bore you with that detail. So now what we've done, this particular order, they requested three-quarter inch frame. Have no fear whether it's three-quarter or one inch, you're still going to make a great frame. Don't let anyone lie to you and say that one inch is not better. Come a little bit closer, everyone. This is what we call a mutton bar in our industry, the thicker one. And then we have a mutton bar that's half the thickness. The idea of this is we, we're gonna use the thicker one in the front, then overlay this in the back, and then rivet it to the piece in front of it so that it's nice and tight. And that's our idea of you at home being able to do this. Now if you can't find mutton bar, have no fear, you can do the same thing with three quarter frame. You just kind of turn that backwards so that spline line points to the back and nobody will ever see it. Now, for our reasons of just having everything look quality, where this bend is at, we always point that to the left. And what we use is, is a crossbar pin, which you can get off the shelf as well at your local big box store. And I'm going to go dead center again on my lines. Now you're probably asking, well, how does that big old pin fit in such a small hole? Well, for the cross braces, we just squash our little ears down and then we take it in and put it where it belongs. But before I do that, I'm gonna get the last of all of these big bars. I'm going to go to the top of my bin. Good. Now again, we're going to bend those ears down on this particular style of mutton bar. Now I normally do, I'm a righty, so I always work on my left side of the bench, if you will. So as I'm down here, all I'm going to do is put my cross braces on my left side, so then I can roll my material over it, spin the thing around, and then put my pins on the other side. And the reason I do that is, almost every time when you go to spin it, the pins sling out, so then you have to redo it anyway. Might as well make that just one. So the same idea that we did earlier, where that bin comes together, I like to point that down. So again, it's just uniform. 
And all I'm doing is setting that again dead center. I think I'm missing one of these. Uh oh. I must have shorted myself in. Oh, and one thing I didn't specify, and forgive me, when you measure, measure the inside of your miter at the corners to get your height and the inside on the corners to get your width. Never do it anything above the actual tight corner. And the reason is, is these bars will tend to bend either out or in. You'll end up making it uh, too small or too big. And uh, nobody wants it looking goofy. Or do that. <laughs> I have to cut one more. I guess I didn't cut before I leave. Oh, wait, here it is. It ran away. <laughs> A little runaway. Who sang that song? A little runaway. I love it. It was fun, Joey. <laughs> All right. So this particular customer asked for 90% black. What is 90% black? Basically, being that it's a solar screen, it's just a very tight weave. So the idea is, is it will eliminate about 40% of the natural light. Where the coin toss in this is the 80%, which is almost transparent. I pretty much preach it as you keep almost all of the natural light. So it will not make your house darker, but it will eliminate the heat. Okay. Now, you see me in a lot of other videos tell you that on my left side, because I'm a righty, I always square my material off. Why do I square my material off? I say this every time. The colors of the material, the dark brown, the, the stuccos, those things, they have a pattern. And if your pattern's crooked, you can sure see it once it's hanging in someone's window. And you're probably gonna have uh, your wife yelling at you for making it crooked. Or if you did it for a customer, they may chase you down with a, I don't know, a stick or something. Try to beat you with it. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put it together like we normally do. And we'll come on up on my front side. And I realize what I'm getting ready to say, I've said in a hundred other videos as well. So our spline, come on down here. Again, in that straight line, I like to use my fingers, just spread that out, put it in place. Use my left hand to just drag it. I'm gonna make sure I'm dead center on all my crossbars. And the idea, the reason I'm dragging my hand is I wanna make sure I don't put any kind of wrinkles in my material. Because we do not like wrinkles in our solar screens. No. And I'm just gonna verify that I'm in the dead center of each one of these. So now I'm just turning the corner. Same thing, I'm dragging it because I do not want to wrinkle in my solar screen. And now I'm gonna do the infamous flip around. Remember I told you earlier, I didn't put the pins on the back side yet because they tend to sling out anyway when you go to spin it. So now I'm gonna do that. Okay, it's a little tight. You see my co-worker over here, he's a University of Houston fan. His good friend bought me an Oklahoma University shirt. Yeah, Boomer Sooner! <laughs> Maybe I should have worn that today, so then we were like fighting with each other. But sadly, a few years ago, U of H beat OU on opening day. Uh, I don't even want to hear about it. <laughs> I'm sending you home. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We lost to the University of Houston. Go true. Ah. <laughs> so here we are. We're going to go ahead and finish this up. Now, like I preached so many times on those other videos, on this side, instead of dragging your hand, pull your hand out. And the reason is, is we're just going to make sure that every one of these is tight. We want no wrinkles in our frame. I'm sorry, in our material. I'm making sure that each one of those, whoops, I got a little tight on that one. There we go. We don't want to over tighten it because then it will bow out. And again, I, I am a perfectionist when it comes to Colonial because it's, it's a very expensive product. As you can see, it's taking extra time. 
certainly a lot of extra aluminum. I mean, we're talking an extra 30 or $40 in aluminum cost alone. So you do not want to do it wrong because that will hurt the pocketbook or at least your budget if you did it wrong. So. And then at the bottom, once again, I'm just walking the material. There's no need to drag it. As you can see, it comes out perfect all by itself. Now what I'm gonna do, of course, is show you that when we trim it, obviously, oh, this blade is sharp. Blades are cheap, keep them sharp. There's no sense working hard. So we're just gonna clean the edges. Uh-oh, look at that cameraman's tripping over there. Wonder what he put in his coffee this morning. <laughs> What'd you do over there? All right. Almost done. Almost done. And then we're going to rivet it. But I at least wanted to finish every step on the camera. So let's sneak a peek at it. What do you think, cameraman? Does it look good? Looking good. I love it. Again, you can see every bar is straight. And by putting your bars in the center, when you get out to your window, if it moves a little bit, that gives you about an eighth of an inch up as well as down because of the way that pin was designed to allow you to scoot that up or down just in case something sat in there different. Maybe your window's a little crooked. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to throw this back down. And now I'm going to rivet it. Come on in here tight on me, Edwin. Because remember, we put the thin bar in the back, the heavy bar in the front. It's a 3 16 drill bit is what we use for a rivet. Ours are painted black so that it's hidden. But have no fear if you're down at the big store and they only have silver, get a handy dandy Sharpie. And then you can just paint a little bit on the back of that and nobody will ever know that you had a different color rivet. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, these were a little bit further down. They get pressed, but you basically do not want to drill all the way through, so you stop as soon as you go through. Take your rivet, shove it in there nice and tight. Beautiful. And the best part of that is, is now the front is connected to the back and connected to the material. So this thing is as strong as, I mean, just as strong as concrete, I guess. I don't know the right way. But nothing's going to come apart because every one of these intersections, I'm going to rivet from behind. That way, again, it's hidden, it looks beautiful, and that's it. I mean, aside from me uh, finishing these rivets, that is how to make a colonial. That's part two of how to put it together. And of course, now you would just go back out and stick it in, which we won't do, because this is actually for a customer that we're not actually installing for. It's one of the screen companies we build for. So we'll leave it at that. With that said, I appreciate you watching part two. Subscribe to us, send us more questions, answers, we're always on the way. Have a good day.